Sometimes, however, making sure the reactor doesn't overheat is um, not always possible. And there have been some nuclear reactor accidents that have been issues for the public. Now, I'm not going to go into these in too much detail. So I do want to talk about them for just a moment. But these are generally the most dangerous reactor accidents that have occurred with nuclear power. Now, the first was in Three Mile Island in Pennsylvania, and this one's relatively unknown, even though it did occur in the United States. And there was some cooling failure in the reactor and some radioactive gas steam was allowed to release into the air and into the neighboring environment. Now, I have not watched the entire documentary about this on Netflix, but there is one where they discuss it in detail. The second and probably the most famous up until the next one, or maybe the most famous overall, was the reactor accident in at Chernobyl in Ukraine, or what is now Ukraine, what was then the Soviet Union, in 1986. There was a training thing they were doing one evening. They didn't know what they were doing, turned off the wrong button, flipped the wrong switches, and you get a huge meltdown of a reactor. It melted down so quickly that it exploded, blew the top off of the containment unit, and all the radiation seeped into the air and everything nearby. There, you will not be able to live there for a very long time. I'm not sure of the exact amount of time, but because of the half-life of those radioactive materials that are in the soil, in the air, in the everything over there, you just could not, no one could live there. You would get cancer over time. Or you would die of radiation poisoning if you were in the wrong place. There's a really good television series that discusses the events at Chernobyl. There's also a bunch of things you could watch about it. But the series was really good. It went into a lot of the science about how the reactors work, which would tell you would let you learn a lot about. what's happening inside of these machines shows a lot of pictures of what the machines really look like and it shows you what they had to try to do to stop it which was pretty drastic and dramatic and quite a few people died from it quite a few people died just from being close to it the firefighters who went to try to put out the fire many of them died just from being close to the reactor after it exploded And so I highly recommend um, this one if, if you have HBO Max, it's a good watch. The most recent reactor accident um, is probably one of the few that you couldn't really blame on people. In 2011, there was an earthquake and tsunami in or near Fukushima, Japan. The earthquake tsunami killed the power to the cooling units of the reactor. The reactor then melted down. Nobody could get to it. There was a tsunami. And so there was no way to stop it or try to fix it. And they, it kind of just, there was no, there was really not much they could do. They tried to get in and stop after every, and stop it um, while it was occurring, but still there was material released into the nearby environment. And just like Chernobyl, there are parts where people cannot go and cannot live. The video about radioactivity that I posted a few weeks ago, I believe, shows both of these places in Chernobyl and Fukushima. There's also tons of information you can find out about these accidents. 
And so I don't feel like I need to go into as much detail when I, you can surely find a more entertaining source like these documentaries or things like that. I'm sure there are documentaries on the Japan earthquake and tsunami. I just don't know of one off the top of my head. The first two, if I remember correctly, were based on human errors. And so they're generally more interest. We know what happened here. It was, there's just nothing they could have done about it. Could have done something about the first two.